let's take the next question in this question it is mentioned there are two concentric rings radius 8 cm and radius 2 cm and they are having the charge of capital Q and small q one is positive one is negative they are saying that electric field is zero at one point at a distance x from the center this distance is x and here the electric field is zero and we have to find the value of q we have to find the value of sorry x we have to find so let us take the electric field due to this this ring bigger ring is e1 since it is positively charged electric field will be e1 this direction and the value of electric field will be k capital q x upon r square plus x square to the power 3 by 2 this expression and due to this smaller ring electric field is say e2 and e2 will be in this direction as small q is negative that's why it is towards the center so the e2 will come out to be k small q x upon r square plus x square to the power 3 by 2 small r square plus x square now since electric field is a vector quantity to add them we need to use the vector addition but this e1 and e2 are in opposite direction so the resultant of this e1 and e2 is e1 minus e2 and it is given this resultant electric field is 0 so it means e1 is equal to e2 this gives us e1 is equal to e2 so substitute the values of e1 and e2 in this equation and we will get this expression kqx upon r square plus x square to the power 3 by 2 equal to this thing after solving it it is a simple mathematics we will get x equal to plus minus 4 centimeter i would like to tell you what is the significance of this plus and minus if we are assuming this is positive then this will be considered as negative so there will be two points on the axis where the electric field is zero one point will be on the right side and one point on the left side that's why answer is given as in all the options if you see plus minus has been marked so correct answer will be plus minus four centimeter let's take the next question this question when uniform thread is there having the linear charge density lambda and it is having the two configurations given two parts one is this one one semi-infinite part quarter circular part and again the semi-infinite part and they are asking the electric field at the point o which is the center of this quarter part now here before starting the question i would like to tell let us take the symbol e to represent for lambda upon 4 pi epsilon naught r then it will make the things easier for us now electric field due to this part means from here to here this one electric field due to this part at this point will be e in this direction and e in this direction then you take the electric field due to this part that is this part at this point will be e in this direction e in this direction lambda upon 4 pi epsilon naught r and due to this part electric field will be e in this direction e in this direction now these are six e's in different direction this cancelled by this one this cancelled by this one so now the net field left 1e in this direction and 1e in this direction left so the answer will be 
root 2 e and along the angular bisector it will be the answer it means electric field at this point will be root 2 lambda upon 4 pi epsilon naught r this is the answer now similarly take the second one now here it is consisting of three parts one is this semi infinite wire other is this semi infinite wire and one is this semi circular wire now we are interested in finding the electric field at point o due to this configuration let us call this s1 this semicircular wire s2 and this s3 then at o due to 1 electric field will be e e now electric field due to semicircular wire will be lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught r at its center so it will be 2e due to 2 at o field will be 2e in this direction and due to 3 at this point o will be e in this direction and e in this direction so this 2e 2e cancel this e this cancel and the field at o will come out to be 0 this is the answer this is a very nice example for the principle of superposition how to use the principle of superposition consider a sphere of radius r which carries a uniform charge density rho if a sphere of radius r by 2 is carved out of it the ratio ea by eb of magnitude of electric field respectively at points a and b due to the remaining portion now you see the given structure can be considered as this minus this from this total solid sphere we have removed this one then we are going to get this as the sphere now if we see here this point is a and this point is b so electric field at let us call it as 1 and call it as 2 then electric field at a will be net electric field at a electric field at a due to 1 minus electric field at a due to 2 similarly we will write the electric field at b now what is ea ea is electric field due to 1 means complete sphere is 0 and due to this sphere it is here on the surface only so rho into total charge will be 4 by 3 pi r by 2 whole q this is the charge of this object divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r square r is r by 2 r square this comes the electric field here q upon 4 pi epsilon naught r square now similarly you find the electric field at point b so electric field at point b point b is on the surface of bigger sphere so here you have to use the formula for the surface that is rho into 4 by 3 pi r cube upon 4 pi epsilon naught r square and point b is outside to smaller sphere so here it is q upon 4 pi epsilon naught q into 4 pi rho into 4 by 3 pi r by 2 whole q upon 4 pi epsilon naught r square here r will be how much this distance r by 2 
plus r that is 3r by 2 whole square now here it is given charge is distributed uniformly on the surface of a large infinite sheet we have one large infinite sheet and charge is distributed uniformly on it means charge density is uniform magnitude of e at a point 2 cm means at a distance of 2 cm the field here is given as 60 newton per coulomb he is telling what will be the magnitude of the electric field intensity at a distance of 4 cm at 4 cm what will be the electric field now since this sheet is infinite so this distance or this distance seems to be very simple very small so electric field at these two points will be same 60 newton per coulomb only and it won't be having any difference so answer will be 60 newton per coulomb due to infinite sheet electric field at the nearby points is going to be constant it is going to be uniform take the next question this is the previous year J main question in this figure a very large plane sheet is there very large means this is mentioned it is infinite sheet infinite sheet of positive charge is shown let us say the charge density is sigma p1 and p2 they have given the two points p1 and p2 at a distance of l and 2l here just like in the previous question 2 cm and 4 cm if sigma is the surface charge density magnitude of the electric field at p1 and p2 it will be same electric field intensity due to the infinite sheet is equal to sigma upon 2 epsilon naught so electric field intensity at point p1 as well as at point p your answer will be 3 right it is absolutely same as of the previous one Now let's try this one. Now it is also the previous year J main and it is on the basis of the principle of superposition. Three infinite long charge thin sheets are placed. Three infinite long. One is this, other this and other this. Three infinite long infinite plane sheets are there. Magnitude of electric field at point P magnitude of electric field at this point is given as x sigma upon epsilon naught and we have to find the value of we have to find the value of x now electric field at this point will be due to this sheet will be in this direction i am writing it as e1 and E1 is equal to, or here I am writing at point P, electric field due, due to first sheet, leftmost sheet will be E1 in this direction. Why in this direction? Because it is negative and the value will be sigma upon 2 epsilon naught. Now due to second sheet, due to second sheet also, electric field will be in this direction e2 why because e2 is also sigma 2 is also negative e2 is equal to sigma that is 2 sigma upon 2 epsilon naught and due to third sheet that is this one electric field is in this direction why because it is positive sigma is positive so electric field will be away from the charge e3 is equal to sigma upon 2 epsilon naught now all these three sigma 1 sigma 2 e1 e2 e3 are in the same direction so the net electric field will be equal to e1 plus e2 plus e3 and you will get it as sigma plus 2 sigma plus sigma that is 4 sigma upon 2 epsilon naught that is 2 sigma upon epsilon naught 
So the value of x will come out to be 2. Right? Take the next question. Now, they are saying a thin infinite sheet and infinite line charge of respective charge densities plus sigma and plus lambda are placed parallel at 4 meter distance. One is this infinite sheet and one is the line charge. Both are infinite and they are placed at a distance of 5 meter. There are two points and it is also given plus sigma and plus lambda are the charge densities. Points P and Q are 3 by 5 and 4 by 5 perpendicular distance from line charge towards the sheet. So point P is here and point Q is here. And this is 3 by 5 meter and this is 4 by 5 meter. EP and EQ are the magnitude of resultant electric field intensities at point P and Q. Now at both the points electric field will be due to the sheet and due to the wire. Due to the sheet is away from the sheet and due to the wire is also away from the sheet. So net electric field intensity at point P is, I am taking this side positive and this side negative. Electric field intensity at point P is at this point due to the sheet it is in the positive direction. So sigma upon 2 epsilon naught and due to the wire it is in opposite. So lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught r and r is given as 3 upon pi and eq is equal to sigma upon 2 epsilon naught minus lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught into 4 pi pi. Now they are saying Ep by Eq is equal to 4 by A. Ep by Eq is equal to 4 by A. Then and we have to find the value of A. Ep is equal to sigma upon this pi pi cancelled. So sigma upon 2 epsilon naught minus lambda upon 6 epsilon naught is equal to 4 pi a into sigma upon 2 epsilon naught minus lambda upon 8 epsilon naught. And it is also given 2 sigma is equal to lambda. So lambda is equal to 2 sigma. So here only I am writing 2 sigma, 2 sigma. So sigma cancel, epsilon naught cancel, 2 cancel. So what we left? 1 minus 2 by 3 is equal to 4 by a into 1 minus 1 by 2. So it will give you a equal to 1 by 3, 4 by 2, 2 into 3 equal to 6. So the answer will be. Let's take the next question. It is also previously a J main question. In this question it is mentioned. A long cylindrical volume is there. This long cylindrical volume. This contains a uniformly distributed charge of density rho, rho coulomb per meter cube. And we have to find the electric field intensity as a function of distance x. At this particular distance, we have to find the electric field intensity. Let's solve this question by using the Gauss law. Consider one Gaussian surface, cylindrical Gaussian surface like this type this type of cylindrical Gaussian surface say of length L 
and radius x. Then due to the symmetry here the electric field is only in this direction in this way. Let us say electric field is E. Then the flux linked with this Gaussian surface will become E into the curved surface area 2 pi x into L and the flux linked with this plane surface and this plane surface will become 0 because electric field and the area vector are perpendicular to each other. Total flux linked with this Gaussian surface is equal to charge enclosed. Charge enclosed is rho into volume of this pi x square L volume of this cylinder upon epsilon naught. So here you can write pi pi cancelled x x cancelled L L cancelled. So you have left with E is equal to rho x upon 2 epsilon naught. So they are asking at x equal to 2 epsilon naught by r what rho what is the field. So value of x you substitute rho upon 2 epsilon naught and x is 2 epsilon naught by rho. So it will become 1. So the electric field intensity at this point at this point will be equal to 1. So your answer will be sigma is the uniform surface charge density of a thin spherical shell of radius r. We have a thin spherical shell of radius capital R. Electric field at any point on the surface of the shell. They are saying the electric field at any point on the surface. And surface charge density is given sigma. So charge is total charge here is Q is equal to sigma upon sigma into 4 pi r square. And at the surface the electric field intensity is Q upon 4 pi epsilon naught r square. So Q if you substitute sigma into 4 pi r square upon 4 pi epsilon naught r square. So 4 pi r square cancel and answer comes out to be sigma upon epsilon naught. Graphical variation of electric field due to uniformly charged insulating solid sphere means non-conducting solid sphere. So in non-conducting solid sphere charge will be distributed volume throughout the volume. So charges throughout the volume. So volume charge density is there. How the electric field varies with distance r from the center. Now we know the electric field intensity due to solid sphere is E equal to rho r by 3 epsilon naught for r less than r and equal to q upon 4 by epsilon naught r square for r greater than r. So for up to radius it is linear variation and after that it is inverse square. So it is linear and after that inverse square. So this will be the correct answer one. Take the next question. A positive charge Q is placed in a spherical cavity made in a positively charged sphere. We have one positively charged sphere. This is positively charged sphere. And in this one cavity has been created. One cavity has been created like this way. Now it is also given the centers of the sphere and the cavity. These two centers are displaced by a small distance L vector. This is L vector. Force on charge Q and charge is placed here. This charge is placed here. And here we have the positively surface charge density. Now force on this charge is in which direction? Now there is one concept that electric field intensity in this region, in this cavity, electric field intensity in the cavity is equal to rho L vector upon 3 epsilon naught at any point in the cavity. Electric field intensity at any point in the cavity. How this expression is coming, uh, we can see it later on. 
Now they are saying, if this charge is there and this charge particle is in this uniform electric field, this is uniform. So it will experience the force equal to Q E vector. Q E vector. So the force will be Q into rho L by 3 epsilon naught. Now let's see the options. Force on charge Q is in the direction parallel to vector L. Yes, it is parallel to vector L. So this is right. It is in radial direction. No, we cannot say means uh, where the charge particle this is this way. This is the radial direction, but the force is in this way. So this is wrong in a direction which depends on the magnitude of charge density. No, direction is not depending on the magnitude of the charge density. So this is wrong. Direction cannot be determined. This is also wrong because direction we have determined it is along the L vector. In this question, it is given a positive charge is distributed uniformly throughout the volume of an insulating sphere of radius capital R centered at origin. We have one uh, solid sphere on which the charge Q has been given. Q charge has been given. A positive charge is placed at x equal to 2R. Another charge is placed here, Q, which is at 2R from the center. Magnitude of the electric field at x equal to R by 2, they are asking. At this point, what is the magnitude of the electric field? Point P, this is R by 2. So here, electric field at point P will be due to the sphere, due to sphere, and due to the point charge placed outside. Now, due to the sphere, electric field intensity at any inside point, inside point is given by Q into R upon 4 pi epsilon naught R cube. So, direction of this electric field due to the sphere will be in this direction, E1. Say this is E1 and say due to the outside charge is E2. Then E1 is in this direction towards this side and E2 will be in this direction. And E1 is equal to Q into R by 2 upon 4 pi epsilon naught RQ. And E2 is the electric field due to point charge formula Q upon 4 pi epsilon naught R square where R is equal to this distance. 2R minus R by 2, that is 3R by 2. So 3R by 2 whole square. So 3R whole square into 4 upside average. Now these E1 and E2 are in opposite direction. So the net electric field will become E1 minus E2. E1 minus E2 means net field will be in this direction. E1 is Q upon 4 pi epsilon naught. R square is common. We have taken R square common here. Then it is 1 by 2 minus 4 by 9. So it will become Q upon 4 pi epsilon naught. R square into 9 to 18. 9 minus 8, 1. So it will become Q upon 72 pi epsilon naught R square. So answer will be this one. Right? So see here uniformly charged solid sphere and another point charge. So we have used the principle of superposition. Writing this, you have to only take the magnitude Ea by Eb. Substitute and get the answer. Now let's take the next question. Find the electric field at any point P in shaded region. They are saying this is a shaded region. You have to find the electric field here. 
sphere 1 is having the uniform charge density plus rho while this is having the uniform charge density minus rho. Now you see this is also a very nice question. This arrangement is equivalent to sum of these two. Sum of these two. But here this is having the charge density plus rho and this is having the charge density minus rho. Let us consider a point P in this shaded region, this point P. Then point P is inside the inner one as well as inside the second one, inside to both the spheres, positive and negative. When these two are going to be uh, overlapping, then we are getting this thing. So electric field at point P can be written as superposition of electric field at point P due to 1. I am calling this as 1 and this as 2 plus electric field at P due to 2. Now this point P electric field at point P due to 1 is rho C P1 upon 3 epsilon naught and due to this it is we are using vector equation and whenever vector equation we use, we have to write the charge with sign. So it is minus rho C2P upon 3 epsilon. This is C2. So this vector is C2P. Now it can be written as, sorry, here C1P, not CP1. Rho by 3 epsilon is common and we have C1P minus C2P. I'll tell you what is C1P minus C2P. C1P, PC2, then it is minus C2P. So C1P plus PC2 is nothing but this term in bracket. This is equal to how much? C1C2. So it can be written as rho upon 3 epsilon naught into C1, C2 vector. This will be your answer. It is a very nice question of the principle of superposition.